Are there pieces of your HDS experience that help you today? Pieces that you can think about that have come all the way back to your HDS days that you call upon occasionally in your daily life? Sure. I mean, I think that um, in some ways the um, experiences of being here were opportunities to um, think deeply about some of the issues that we've both been talking about mm -hmm. and to um, be in conversation with other people who were thinking deeply about those issues and who wanted to take action. Um, so I learned here a lot about working collaboratively and collectively and then acting. That is not just reflecting, but also taking action. And I also learned how to, in a very um, comforting and comforted at some level environment, how to speak truth to power. There weren't always administrators who were interested in opening mm -hmm. the doors of the university to women. And there was a lot of um, stereotyping about why women were studying theology and what were women doing in MDiv programs, and particularly Catholic women. Good questions, I might add. But, um, so I learned a lot about that, and I think a lot about it. But maybe most importantly, I made um, relationships and friendships, both um, locally, nationally, and internationally, that continue to be the relationships that are critically important to me. I hang out a lot with divines, even though I'm teaching in <laughs> psychology. As you mentioned in the introduction, I learned an enormous amount from Nancy Richardson in terms of undoing racism. I worked with her in an organization called Grailville. We set up an alternative women's theological education program. So I learned about how to earn a living in the institution and how to work to subvert the institution by starting other organizations. So I learned that change requires both being in systems and also being outside of systems. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, and it sounds like we both have been blessed, gifted with the capacity to think that you can have a foot in both places that sometimes you feel quite stretched in directions and that there are not enough hours in the day or that you don't have a personal life or some of those, your personal loved ones have laid eyes on you for weeks or whatever it might be. But um, so I also learned something from Raimundo Panicar. I often use statements that I think I learned here. I don't really know if he ever said this, but I remember him as having said in a lecture here that in order to really listen deeply, you have to stand under an experience in order to begin to understand it. And that has been an enormously important guiding principle for me because I think it is, I have worked in many zones of armed conflict and with many people whose lives um, are deeply disenfranchised. And I think it's super hard to understand any of that from the privilege of white higher education in the United States. And so I often think about what does it mean to stand under an experience. I learned a lot from Henry now, and not just from his book, but also about what it means to be a wounded healer, about what it means to work in these kinds of zones and how you are marked in your own body by these experiences. And so you better learn how to take care of yourself. You better find some place, some people who can accompany you, or you will not be able to sustain the struggle. And I think I learned a lot of that here from William Rogers, who taught between the Ed School and, and from the men and women with whom I lived at the time, with whom we were trying to create some kind of alternative community, one of whom is here right now. Um, so it's really a, um, all of those were things I learned here or the communities of people I had an opportunity to come into contact with um, through the Divinity School and through the Divinity School's part within the larger university. That is, I did a lot of work with people in the Harvard Graduate School of Education. We set up the Women's Counseling and Resource Center, the first ever of its kind in the United States. It now seems like it's hard to believe that that uh, hasn't. That, so yes, lots, lots. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Jeff? Um, Beyond the wonderful mentors I, I found here and in, in other parts of the Harvard community and the, you know, the, <clears throat> the uh, thinking and growing the coursework and whatnot itself um, helped me do, the, uh, I think there are a couple things that are really distinctive about this place, Harvard Divinity School, that really helped 
me and that, that I sort of draw on perhaps even more than I know on a, on a daily basis. And one is that um, I'm very, very interested in sort of um, uh, the tensions and the potential for you know, for goodness that, that comes in environments that might feel very charged um, because they, um, we, we find uh, deeply held values colliding and, mm -hmm. and, and or, you know, uh, uh, close corollary, corollary, you know, identities um, colliding. And, um, and uh, this is a place that draws, uh, you know, people from, Many, many different sort of uh, you know perspectives, walks of life, in a way, in a much richer way than I had ever experienced in any sort of environment that I'd been in before. And uh, there's a way in which just being here, you know, helped me uh, uh, um, you know develop a capacity to sort of uh, see that, appreciate that you know, navigate that, listen. Um, you know, you, you, I was taking negotiation courses and conflict resolution courses in which we talked about the importance of, you know, listening and all the, you know, social psychological research about, you know, how, how to do it well. And yet, um, uh, this was a really interesting environment in which to, um, you know, to be, uh, uh, to be doing that sort of learning and listening with people who are coming from very different places, very different experiences all over the world, many different religious tra traditions, many different sort of uh, perspectives. I think it helped that, uh, um, or to make it even richer, that you know the the fact that you'd have students uh, from the BTI coming here. We had the yeah. opportunity to go out there sometimes, you know, from from different, you know, let's say, more conservative, you know, some more conservative you know, religious trajectories or strains than, than you might find uh, predominating in this in, in environment, not to, not to overgeneralize, but, um, so that's one thing. Um, another thing was just, and you touched on this, this sense of uh, coming with that restlessness and, and not, you know, and, and uh, being a bit of a mess that first semester and really not knowing, uh, you know, where all this was going to lead, I, this was a this was a place that just kind of communicated, uh, trust it, run with it, um, more than I think most academic environments, academic communities do, and I I really appreciated that, and and uh, I, I think it's something of a touchstone for me, you know, in situations where e even now I you know I wonder you know, this direction or that direction, uh, pear or banana or, you know, <laughs> or, or, you know, richer fruit salad. So um, uh, that, you know, a very sort of a, a great holding environment for, um, you know, for figuring out what um, one's original, you know, contributions and direction can be.